Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you a skincare routine aimed at improving hyperpigmentation, dark marks on the skin related to acne, uh, how to fade those post-acne dark marks. I'm gonna be using products by the brand Specific Beauty. This is not sponsored, but I heard about this brand a long time ago and was curious about it, and then I saw in Target they have a kit of five of their products, so I decided to give the kit a go, and I'm gonna share with you today how to use these products. But Specific Beauty is a skincare line that is owned by a dermatologist, Heather Woolery Lloyd. She is fantastic. She is a dermatologist based in Miami, who uh, spe specializes in treating issues of hyperpigmentation in ethnic skin specifically. So she um, is really an expert in the area of treating skin of color. And so I was enthusiastic about these products and I love that they are free of fragrance and they're pretty straightforward to use. This routine is good if you have oily skin, it's good if you have dry skin, but if you have really sensitive skin, you want to be really conservative with using these products and you may not be able to use all of them in one routine. You may need to alternate some of the products and the products instruct you on how to alternate them. So it's pretty straightforward. Starting out with a nighttime routine, you wanna start your skincare routine at night by always washing your face to remove cosmetics, sunscreen, dirt, etc. You wanna start with a clean slate. But that is even more important when it comes to using some of these other products because the active ingredients need to go to work um, and they need to penetrate your skin effectively. If you have dirt and makeup that's all over your skin, little, you know, patches, it's gonna to lead to uneven uptake of these active ingredients and you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get good results. So the cleanser, is just a basic, no-nonsense, fragrance-free cleanser. It's really gentle. It doesn't have any harsh surfactants in it. There's no fragrance, really short ingredient list. I love this cleanser. I mean, I have nothing bad to say about it. If you happen to get it in your eyes, it doesn't burn or sting. But the reason this is so important is that if you, when you wash your face, if you use a really harsh cleanser that over dries out your skin, when you go on to the next steps in the skincare routine using these active ingredients, you're gonna be more likely to have irritation. So the cleanser is great. You all know that I take off my sunscreen and mascara in the shower, that's when I wash my face. So the cleanser is gonna be the first step. Now this next part of the routine, I kind of deviate away from the kit. After you have rinsed off the cleanser, while your skin is still damp, I recommend going ahead and putting on just a lightweight water-based moisturizer. I will list some down below. There's also one on their website, but it didn't come in this kit. This will just help in reducing water loss from the skin. And then once you do that, allow it to dry fully. And this way, when you go to put on the next set of ingredients, you're gonna have less irritation from those ingredients and you'll tolerate them better. See, in the kit, it doesn't really tell you with the next product that you should do the moisturizer first or anything. It just says after cleansing, apply a thin layer of this next product. So in my opinion, in order to get good success from this next product, make sure after you rinse the cleanser off, you put that moisturizer on, you allow it to dry fully on the skin. This way you'll have better results with tolerating the next product, which has some ingredients in it that are great, but can be irritating. And that is step two, the intensive brightening serum. Now this product has a lot of good ingredients that are aimed at improving hyperpigmentation. They do things like interfere with how pigment is transferred around in the melanocyte, the cells that make pigment, and that can be abnormal in areas of hyperpigmentation and areas where you maybe have had a lot of irritation in the past, maybe from healing acne. The Intensive Brightening Serum has licorice root, it has niacinamide, and it also has retinol. And it will help in removing some sun damaged skin cells, brightening up skin tone, and with long-term consistent use, it can help firm the skin and improve the appearance of wrinkles and fine lines. And the licorice root and the niacinamide, not only do they help hyperpigmentation, but they're also anti-inflammatory, so they will help calm down redness. 
I was just putting a little um, CeraVe healing ointment on my lips here. But yeah, you can see my skin. Uh, I had applied the moisturizer, but it is fully dried now at this point. So this is a good time to go ahead and apply that uh, serum. It will be less irritating applied to clean, dry, but moisturized skin. And you really only need two pumps of the serum and you want to apply it to your mid face and your forehead the sides of your face but you want to avoid getting it around your mouth or around your eyes and i would also caution you not to apply it on your neck the reason for this is that the skin around the eyes oops <laughs> I apply it to my floor. Uh, the skin around your eyes, uh, around your mouth, and on your neck uh, is thin, delicate, and predisposed to a lot of irritation. So don't put it there. Um, you really don't need much, though, to get your entire face. And more does not get you better, faster, or anything. It's just waste product. So just spread it out into an even, thin layer on the forehead, the sides of the face, and the mid face. Now, if you have really sensitive skin and you find that this product causes too much irritation for you, just apply it to areas of concern and avoid applying it to the entire face. Otherwise, uh, you know, for me, I, I don't have any issue using this, but bear in mind, I use prescription tretinoin uh, ordinarily on every night. So my skin is used to things like retinols, but yeah, it absorbs really quickly and dries down and that's basically it. However, there is another product, another product that comes in the kit that you might want to consider using to specific areas of hyperpigmentation is the accelerated dark spot corrector. This is hydroquinone. It's 2% hydroquinone and as a side note, I'm elated to see that we have, I didn't even realize this uh, existed, but it's a fragrance-free hydroquinone. That's really hard to find. Now, this product will help in improving hyperpigmentation, but it can be very, very irritating. It is not safe in pregnancy, so you don't wanna use it. I, I wouldn't use any of these products, actually, if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. I would just hold off, but, um, except the sunscreen, you know, you can use that, it's fine. But anyways, yeah, um, this has hydroquinone in it. Now I have a video about hydroquinone. It's not the devil, it's, it's safe. There are some side effects that can happen with long-term use, but as long as you don't use it for greater than four to five months without taking a break, you're fine. And you know, those, those side effects, they tend to happen with really higher strengths that you've been using for a long, long time. But the important thing, if and when you choose to introduce this product into the routine, you definitely, of course, want to use it at night here. And you only want to apply a teeny tiny amount just to the area of hyperpigmentation, just enough that you put it in the center of the area where you have hyperpigmentation and then spread it out into a thin film to cover that whole area of discoloration. Like say for example, you have a lot of uh, dark marks on the jawline related to hormonal acne that has healed. You can put it, uh, you know, like a tiny pea there and just spread it out to, to cover the whole surface if you have a lot of discoloration. But if you just have a few dark spots, like a pimple that healed with the dark mark, just put a tiny drop there and then rub it in a circle. You don't wanna treat the whole face with this product. The reason for that is that you have skin cells that are not, you know, hyperactive in terms of pigment production and they don't really need to see this and you can get a paradoxical rebound hyperpigmentation if you treat those areas so just treat the areas of concern the areas where you have actual hyperpigmentation and again you don't want to use this indefinitely i mean it's a small tube and she actually instructs you to only use it for 7 to 14 days and then be done with it but i think the reason for that instruction is just to kind of kick start the improvement process so i think that's kind of how the kit works is that you use the hydroquinone just as like a kickstart period to have that on board and then you're going to use some of these other ingredients whose downstream byproducts have hydroquinone like activity and that's going to take over um, so that is where i would stop at the nighttime routine now 
There are, the kit also comes with these dark spot corrector pads. And I kind of struggled with when to introduce these into the routine. Um, the instructions say to use it at nighttime, but we're already doing a lot at nighttime. And I find that it's kind of confusing. It says to use these and to use the dark spot corrector, but then you also have the serum. It also suggests that if you find that your skin is really sensitive to maybe alternate the serum with the pads. And looking at the ingredients, I don't think there's anything in this, as far as the ingredients, that necessitates it being used at night. You see the hydroquinone product and the serum, those have ingredients that you wanna use at nighttime because they, the retinol, for example, in the serum can degrade with light. It's just better to use these at nighttime. But the pads, they don't have anything in them that necessarily, you know, you can't use during the daytime. And they have, pro they have ingredients in the pads that are antioxidants. And what antioxidants do is that when they're applied to the skin, they kind of can help in scavenging free radicals related to sun damage, related to sun exposure during the day. So it's good to have them applied in the morning so that you go throughout the day. And when you see, when, when you have sun exposure, you have the antioxidants on board to help mitigate some of the damaging effects of UV. These pads, uh, you get 30 pads in this jar, but I think if you go on the website, you can buy a bigger jar of them and get more of them. And the pads, I was a little like, mm, I don't know, at first in terms of like, is that gonna work? But actually each pad has just enough product to really cover all surfaces. So you don't feel like you're wasting product. Um, like for example, if you had, if you had this solution in a bottle that you poured out in your hands and patted on your skin, I think you would end up getting a more uneven application and kind of wasting it. So these pads have like just the right amount of the product soaked into each pad and you can just swipe it on your face. Now I ended up, like I said, using this in the morning. I'm not someone who washes my face in the morning. If you do, that's fine. So for me, I just woke up and woke up in the morning and put this on my dry face, but you might get, you probably get better results if you wash your face first and then apply this. You can actually apply this to the skin while it's still damp to get even better uptake of these active ingredients, which are antioxidants. The pads have green tea, they have arbutin, they have kojic acid, they have licorice, they have vitamin C, and they have milk thistle, an antioxidant. And they also have bearberry. So there are a lot of ingredients in these pads, all of which are aimed at addressing hyperpigmentation through their antioxidant-like properties and helping scavenge free radicals. So personally, I found that it worked best for me to use it in the morning and the other products at night. With the pads, that solution in the pad, you want to cover all surfaces. You don't want to get it around your eyes. I actually put it on my neck and found that that was fine. There's nothing in this that's super irritating for the neck, but if you're you know, if you have really sensitive skin, you might want to be cautious about taking it down on the neck, but I was able to do that just fine. Uh, so you can cover all surfaces. Again, just be sure to not get it near your eyes. Eyes tend to be very sensitive. After that dries down, which doesn't take very long at all, um, it's not like it's, you know, soaking your skin or anything. After that dries down, then you want to put the sunscreen on. Or if you don't use these pads, you choose to skip the pads in the morning, then you definitely want to wear the sunscreen. Sunscreen, in order to get success from this kit, sun protection is the most important part. You will get nowhere from a kit like this or from products like these if you are not reapplying sunscreen religiously throughout the day, multiple, multiple times a day, regardless of what you're doing, even when you're indoors, uh, trust me, like you really need to be on your sunscreen and sun protection game with this because the sun that comes through the windows, the visible light through the windows, all of these things will just undo the work of the active ingredients. Uh, it's really important to be, to be vigilant. And I recommend getting a sun protective hat, um, a face shield, depending on, how, uh, depending on how motivated you are for sure. 
I recommend a UV face shield. I'll list one down below. Um, it really makes a huge, it makes a difference. It, when you, when you add, take that extra step with the sun protection, it makes a huge difference in how, in the results that you're gonna get in fading the hyperpigmentation. Um, but the sunscreen that comes in the kit, uh, it's kind of mm, okay. It's not the best sunscreen. I would not go out of my way to buy this sunscreen. It's not bad, it's just, it's a chemical sunscreen. So a lot of people find chemical sunscreens are irritating and burner sting. This particular one has oxybenzone in it, a chemical filter that tends to be more irritating. So you will, you're likely to experience some tingling, burning, irritation with this. For the most part, chemical sunscreens tend to have no cast. Um, but when you add mica and titanium dioxide in, that tends to give a white flash. So I found that this, I'm wearing it currently actually, I find that this kind of has this almost metallic look to it that I don't care for, but you might like it. I don't, I personally don't, don't care for it. I would have preferred a tinted mineral sunscreen. Mineral sunscreens tend to be less irritating and then tinted sunscreens have typically iron oxides, which will offer protection against those pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. Remember uh, from my videos on blue light, it does uh, contribute to early onset and more persistent hyperpigmentation in people with medium to deep skin tones. So that's really what you would be looking for in a line like this is extra protection from those wavelengths that are contributory. Now, a lot of these, this stuff about blue light, it's been fleshed out more recently in the past few years. So maybe it wasn't as much of a consideration in the formulation of the sunscreen. I'm not sure when it came out, but that would be something to perhaps look forward to in the future from this brand. Um, the sunscreen, it does have this like kind of metallic-y sheen to it. I don't know how well that's going to go over for deeper skin tones. It, it might look okay, but I don't know. For me, it just kind of looked like a, a metallic sheen. Um, I don't find, even though it has oxybenzone in it, I did not find that it uh, cause any burning or stinging around my eyes. I didn't have any issue putting it around my eyes, but on my cheeks, I did find a little tingling warm sensation with it. Um, I noticed it has uh, as a antioxidant in the sunscreen, a cinemate and cinemates do cause uh, vasodilation, uh, which uh, can make you feel a little more warmth, the sensation of warmth and irritation. Um, so I think maybe that was what the issue was, but yeah, you, you want to put the sunscreen to all surfaces. So if it is uncomfortable to, for you, you're going to be resistant to do that, especially around the eyes and whatnot. So I don't know, the sunscreen is not perfect. That that being said, it is harder to formulate tinted mineral sunscreens that will look okay on a deeper skin tone and not give that purple tone. Uh, so I think sometimes when uh, brands are looking to make a sunscreen that is marketed towards people with deeper skin tones, they'll just default to chemical sunscreen because for the most part, they don't leave a, a white cast. issue with the sunscreen is that it does pill quite a bit. Um, I don't know, and I tried using it just to a bare face as well as using it after the pads and it didn't really make a difference because you may think, well, those pads, maybe they messed up how well the sunscreen set up, but I tried it, you know, on a dry face. It pills a little bit. Yeah, for me personally, the metallic look, it's not my preference, but maybe on a deeper skin tone, it might actually look pretty good. I'm not sure, to be honest, um, but that was not my favorite product in this kit. But overall, these products are very good, um, so long as you are patient with them and you are really, really, really diligent with the sun protection, I believe you will get good results from these products in terms of improving hyperpigmentation. I knows what she's talking about for sure. She's an expert in treating hyperpigmentation specifically in deeper skin tones. And you can tell that she oversaw 
um, the formulation of these products uh, and I think they are great and I do believe you will get good results from these so long as you're patient and the other other tip I would say of course is you don't necessarily need to do this routine exactly like I did all at once. I instead would encourage you to try introducing some of these things very, very conservatively in an every other day type fashion and increasing to daily or nightly as tolerated just to just see that you don't develop excessive irritation. Excessive irritation will worsen hyperpigmentation. So that's the last thing that you want. I would say try the serum, and um, if you're motivated to try hydroquinone, definitely give the specific beauty you want a try because it is hard to find a fragrance-free 2% hydroquinone over the counter. Um, so definitely, I would definitely recommend that. And the pads are not bad either. Um, and I do, I would say though that the, the cleanser and the sunscreen, the cleanser is great, but like, I don't know, you can find a similar cleanser. It's not unique per se. Um, so you can find a more affordable one in the drugstore and you also can find a more affordable sunscreen in the drugstore. But these other products with the active ingredients, they're fantastic. Comment below, those of you who cope with hyperpigmentation, has anyone tried this line? I mean, I don't understand why more people aren't talking about it. The ingredients are great. You know, I'd heard about it a while ago, but I didn't realize you could get it at Target. So yeah, let me know if you guys have tried this, how, what your experience with it was, but I'm really happy with these products and I feel like they're good and I'm happy to recommend them to you guys. And yeah, I hope this video was helpful to you all. I know coping with hyperpigmentation <clears throat> is miserable and you have to have a lot of patience for it to fade and it can take forever. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.